Okay, hello, Craig, and welcome hello. to The Movement. It's good to have you here. Thank you. This is our new series where we're talking about the AI SDR movement. It's coming at us, it's coming fast, and we're picking your brain about everything that's going on. But today we're going to talk about MQLs. Yes, I love MQLs. You love MQLs. You're the former CMO of Salesforce, and MQLs are a big part of your vocabulary there. They're a big part of our vocabulary here when we talk to marketers. But we're going to break it down and I think ask ourselves, are they relevant anymore? But let's start at the beginning. Let's start with leads. Let's talk about kind of the foundation of MQLs, leads that marketers are capturing. How does it all work? The term MQL is something that we have been saying as marketers for at least 15 years. Marketing qualified leads. So it all starts with leads. And for anybody tuning in, let's take a step back. What are leads? They're obviously like the the thing that happens right before pipeline. It's somebody raises their hand and says, I'm kind of interested. So where do these leads come from? Well, they traditionally came from the 1-800 hotline that many companies had. And then, of course, we started slapping forms on our websites. We said, hey, do you want to contact sales? That was like an offer. Hey, do you want a demo? That wasn't like an offer. Uh, do you want a free trial? Maybe we have like a free trial of our, of our product. Do you want to attend to an event? Do you want to attend a webinar? Hey, do you want to download this book? Hey, do you want to sign up for our newsletter? All of those were offers that collected leads. And then we're like, okay, well, what do we actually do with the, these leads? Does marketing follow up with them? Is that marketing's job? Do our account executives follow up with them? I don't know. It seems like that would be kind of a waste of their time. So what did we do as an industry? We decided we were going to hire a dedicated team of people to follow up with these leads. We hired them and we called them sales development reps, now known as SDRs. And the SDR's job, follow up with the leads and try to generate pipe. Okay, so as marketers, we're generating as many leads as possible. We have this whole team of human SDRs dedicated to working those leads, and then we have these pipeline targets. So how did SDRs work these leads to kind of hit those targets or those thresholds that they were working towards? The first thing was that every company has an ideal customer profile or ICP. It just defines like, who who will you sell to and who will you not sell to? So let me give you an example. Some companies say like, I'm only going to sell my product uh, in North America, I'm all, or my product is only in English, so I can only sell it to English-speaking kind of countries in general. Other organizations, they say, like, my, my product's not really uh, used by SMBs, so you have to have, like, a, a 50 or 80 employee threshold for me to even sell to you. That's called ICP. The second thing is, after you kind of weed out all of those leads, you get kind of everybody else that's left. And now you want to stack rank all of those leads. Who has the highest propensity to buy? Who's the hottest? The hot leads, that's what we always call them, right? Well, as it turns out, the hottest leads tend to be the phone number, number one. If somebody picked up the phone and they're actively trying to talk to your sales organization, they're probably pretty interested. Then it became the contact sales forms on our websites. Then it was like request a demo. And then it was like free trial. And then it started to get like squishy. If somebody attended one of my webinars or let's say they came to one of my virtual events, do they really have a propensity to buy? I don't know. They're kind of like probably more in the middle of the funnel. They're educating, but they're committed because they spent a long time with us. And then you get people even higher up in the funnel that we don't know if they're interested at all. They just downloaded like an ebook or they just read some of our content. So they're aware of us, but are they really interested to buy? I don't know. Hence the term MQL was born. It's the contract between the marketing team and the SDR team that says, which leads are so-called sales ready? Which leads should you be working? And if they fit our MQL criteria, they got passed over between marketing over to this SDR org and the SDR would have to work them. What happens to all the other leads? I don't know. What should we do with those? And so we really have two problems in this scenario. These two problems we have had for the last 15 years in our industry. Problem number one, when the MQL, the hot lead, leaves the marketing team and goes over to the SDR team, what's happening? I don't know. It's like a black box. So I'll get into that maybe a little bit more here in a second. And then number two, what happens to all the other leads? Well, they kind of get kicked back to the marketing organization. What did we do historically? We put them into a database and we so-called like nurtured them, right? What does that really mean? We kind of built this like so-called journey where we're like, let's send them on a journey and let's pre-develop these templates. And it's basically like a mass email. We just kind of kept mass emailing all these folks, trying to keep them warm. Did it really work? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, obviously, as a marketer, we work our tails off to generate these MQLs, to generate these leads, and then to not have confidence that they're being worked properly. That hurts my heart. So let's talk about those problems a little bit more. 
Once we hand those MQLs off to sales reps, what does that look like? What does that process look like today? Well, everybody in our industry now knows after like studying this for like 10, 15 years, that there's something called the five minute rule, which is if you can follow up with a qualified inbound lead within five minutes, you're 20 times more likely for that lead to end up in your pipeline. Basically, which is you're 20 times more likely to convert that into a sale. But can any of our teams respond in five minutes? Can any of us? Like, no way. No one is doing it in five minutes. Not even the best of the best companies today. Not even the best can do it in five minutes. And let me tell you why. Number one, what has to happen when that MQL criteria gets tripped? Well, first, you got to got to run your automation rules to say like, okay, this one fits the criteria. That's kind of instant. But then you have to typically sync that lead over to Salesforce. That takes what, five minutes? I don't know. And then you have to figure out who am I assigning this lead to? Well, some companies do it really simply. They just go one for you, one for you, one for you. It's called round robin. But some companies are actually better at it. Like they're trying to figure out who is the best person who can convert this type of lead. Well, those routing rules, they tend to run in sometimes other systems. That takes like another 15 minutes. And then the lead gets, gets, gets stuffed into a queue. What is a queue? It's literally a screen where it's like, you should work on this one first, second, and third. Now, what has to happen after that? A human SDR has to see the queue. Well, if you're working on another app or you got some other task you're doing, or you're on an all hands call, or maybe you're out to lunch, or maybe it's nights or weekends, or maybe you're on vacation, the human is not going to see that lead in the queue. It's just going to sit there and it's going to sit there and it's going to sit there. Then when somebody actually pays attention to it, what do they do? They grab an email template, they remove F name and they sign their name and they try to personalize it a little bit. To personalize it, you kind of got to know a little bit about this person. You got to go out to LinkedIn. You got to figure out, well, who is this company? Let me go to their website, check out what they do. Ah, now I do a little bit of personalization. When you add up all that time and all of those tasks, that's I call that the workflow around the inbound lead, the human-centric workflow around the inbound lead. That takes hours to days. The best of the best companies can do all that in 90 minutes. On average, it's like five hours. Some companies, it takes six days. It's totally insane. And that's how we're treating the hottest of the hot leads. And as a CMO, if you're hearing me say this right now, you're probably like, oh, like there's a feeling in your stomach, like, oh my gosh, like, can we do better? I hope so. Mm -hmm. And so that's the problem with MQLs. Those are the best leads and it's taking hours or days to respond. I know we've talked about the stat before that 78% of buyers will go with the vendor that responds to them first. And if you're losing that race, you're not going to get that business. Right. What's happening, by the way, what is happening while you while the clock is ticking? Well, what's happening? That person who was interested, like they've moved on to something else. Think about this. What are you going to be doing two hours from now? What are you going to be doing 20 minutes from now? What are you going to be doing six days from now? Something else. That's mm -hmm. what we all know. Your mind is going to be on something else. You are interested in the moment. You filled out a form. You generated the lead, and guess what? We took too long to get back to you, and now you're on to something else. Now we have to hunt you down to try to kind of get you back into our process. Shame on us for like letting that happen. Yeah, it's an antiquated process. And then let's shift gears and talk about the other problem, which is all of those other leads. You talked about the middle of funnel leads, the top of funnel leads, folks who've showed some interest in your business, but you're not going to spend your human bandwidth working those folks. What happens with all of those leads? What happens with all those leads? Exactly. That's the question. Where do they go? Well, here's where they go into a database. And then as marketers, we're trying to deliver some value. We're like, there must be, there must be some gold in there, right? Some of those people like have to be interested in something. So what did we come up with? Like all the brilliant minds in the marketing industry, what did we all come up with? Content nurture. Nurture journeys is what we call them. Basically, we draw these pictures on a screen in our marketing automation software. And we say, let's send them on a journey. Hey, let's send the people that look like this. Let's send them this piece of content. And then if they open it, let's do this. But if they open it and click, let's do this other thing. And then let's wait five days. And then let's do this. Well, like that journey, it's not like the buyer's journey. That's like something that we as our marketing teams, and it's happening at every single company. We're all doing this, right? It's happening at every single company. Those journeys, they're just something we manufactured in our head. It's the best thing we could have come up with because these journeys are not like one-to-one -one and they're not personalized. What would be the dream, honestly? The dream would be to have an entire monstrous team of human SDRs that could follow up with every single lead that meets my ideal customer profile criteria 
we'd have a monster team of SDRs that's doing this. Like we could comb through and we could find every bit of pipeline that we had generated. The problem is like, it's just not cost efficient to do that. It's impossible to do that. So we're stuck in this world now where we have the team of human SDRs that we have like the budget to pay for. They can only work so many things because there's only so many hours in the day. So we've defined this rigid contract to only work on the best things. But what about everybody else? Like, what are we missing out on in pipe gen? Obviously, it qualified a big question that we've been asking ourselves is like, how is AI going to transform this whole process? So what's the answer? What does the future look like for this process? And how do we turn it on its head? The answer has to be AI. Like AI is here to solve this problem. At Qualified, of course, we have uh, an AI SDR. Her name is Piper. Piper, the AI SDR. You might be looking at some other software vendor. There's probably like now on the market, many different ways to solve this, but I can like, let's talk about how you would solve this with Piper. The first thing you would do is you would give Piper all of the, you would basically stick in a queue for Piper, all of the leads that meet your ideal customer profile. And Piper can work in parallel. Piper doesn't have to go, let me work on this one. Now do this one. Now go get a cup of coffee and now do this one, right? Piper doesn't have to do that. Piper can work on everything that meets your ICP instantaneously and she scales infinitely. So for example, if you have a really busy day and you need to be working 15 hot MQLs at the same time, great, right? She can do that. She can do that at the same time and she can follow up instantly. The five minute rule, the only dream of hitting the five minute rule is to use AI. And so Piper is the answer for that. But what about all of those other leads that didn't meet the, the MQL criteria? Well, as long as they meet your ICP, Piper can work those also. And she can work them intelligently. So for example, Piper might say, hey, Mora, based on kind of what you've done and, and the form you filled out and what I see you've done on the website in the past. Oh, by the way, I saw you on the website three times before you filled out that form. So I have like the whole profile and the history of you. Hmm, and I know your industry because... You filled out a form, I got your email address. I enriched it all, right? Because Piper does automatic enrichment. She looks in all your revenue systems. Oh, I can see that we actually had a deal, an open opportunity with your company like two years ago, but it got deaded out, but, but you're back again. Piper knows that. What would I want to say to you right now? And then she can craft that one-to-one -one personalized message on her own with all that data. Only AI can do this. Only AI. A human SDR, even if we had an infinite number of them, probably wouldn't have combed through all the systems to even find that. But because all the data is assembled together and Piper can read it all and see it all in real time, she can send the right personalized message. And then she could say, hmm, now I, I could send you something a few days from now and maybe I will, but she's always on the lookout for what you do. Open the email. Oh, open the email again. Oh, maybe you're back on my website. Piper knows all. She can see what's happening in the inbox. She can see what's happening on the website. And no, no journey is hard-coded. No template is hard-coded. And it's just an entirely new world. Like so many of us are stuck in this way of thinking. In fact, like I was stuck in this way of thinking like two years ago. And then as we've been on this journey with AI, we've been on this journey with Piper, the AI SDR, you have to think in an entirely new way. You almost have to throw out everything that you've learned in marketing and demand gen for the last 10 or 15 years and just be totally open to a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Which is scary because I think it's a tried and true playbook that's gotten us all pretty far. Yes, the MQL playbook. Like, r raise your hand if you have an MQL gauge in your Salesforce dashboard. Like, all the hands go up in the room, right? And so getting away from that and actually challenging that, like, it's going to be tough for a lot of people. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that, about the gauge in Salesforce, about your Salesforce dashboards, about the metrics that matter. In this age of the AI SDR, are MQLs relevant? Does that go away as a metric you should be tracking? How do you think about the success metrics for CMOs going forward? You fast forward uh, into the next year or maybe the next two years, the MQL is dead. The MQL is dead. If you don't have a team of human SDRs that are following up with these leads, then the MQL is dead. The MQL was invented to be this contract between marketing and the SDR team. But if you put AI on following up with all of those leads and nurturing them, the ones the SDR team didn't do, and you move your SDR team onto higher value activities or other types of pipeline generation, then you don't have an MQL anymore. In fact, does the MQL number really matter? You know that dashboard gauge? I know you have one. You've had one in the past. 
And every single CMO, every single head of demand gen, every single marketing VP knows how many MQLs did you generate this month? How many did you generate last month? We all have targets. Well, does that really matter? I know it makes us all feel good when we hit the MQL number, but does it matter? No. Pipeline is the only thing that matters. The SQL, the sales qualified lead, which is basically like a deal that a sales rep has accepted and qualified and says, yes, I will work this. That's all that matters. And that's ultimately, I think that's what we're going to be measured on in the future in marketing. Absolutely. Well, Craig, this was awesome. It's cool to hear your take on the MQL and how it's going away with the emergence of AI SDRs. So thanks for joining us on the movement and I'll talk to you soon. It's been fun. Thanks, Maura.